think we are ready we are ready now right good evening doctors thank you for being with us today today we introduce to you a new paradigm in anterior segment imaging the anterior on behalf of the management of toshro medicals i welcome you and um, we look forward to your participation uh, the ground rules of course being that uh, there is a section of question and answers you can type in your questions and we will be happy to answer them our panelists will be happy to answer them when we talk about anterior we are talking of a single platform for imaging measuring all the parameters that you need for anterior segment analysis monitoring and evaluation we have with us a very elite panel of users who are using the anterior in india and abroad and without much ado i introduce you to the panelists the webinar today is being anchored by professor rohit shetty professor shetty needs no introduction his academic and professional success successes are religion and i trying to talk about them would be like a firefly trying to talk about the moon's light but what draws most people to him is his understanding and support of the young the new breed of ophthalmic surgeons as well as anybody who needs guidance in this field whether it's somebody from the trade or somebody from the fraternity he full heartedly supports them encourages them thank you dr shetty for being with us today we are very proud to have you and your team with us so without much ado i hand over the webinar and the steering of the same to you thank you dr shetty thank you uh, shenaz for this kind words uh, it's one of those uh, webinars very few webinars i've been part of where we are speaking about uh, one technology for the whole hour uh, at the onset uh, i would like to say that i have been a researcher for uh, heidelberg published many papers on confocal but i don't have any financial interest unfortunately and uh, there are very good friends out here i mean uh, martin uh, i look go a long way you know maybe 16 15 16 years back and um, he's been the face of uh, heidelberg for all of us from india because very approachable and very happy to see you and also very happy to see uh, adam also very good uh, technical support i have a fantastic uh, young team uh, anterior is also a very young technology so you will not have uh, gray hairs and white beards people sitting for 10 15 years to understand that like your spectralis or confocal microscopy so we decided to keep a young team because in young it's a it's a youngest baby in your uh, family i guess right martin absolutely absolutely so, so we thought we'll bring in the young crowd to understand the young one because there should not be uh, cultural differences of of uh, you know the age out here um, i had seen this technology um, maybe 2 3 years back at uh, escrs booth i'm not sure whether it was copenhagen or before that i think it was copenhagen so the good old days of travel <laughs> and uh, so i was thoroughly impressed the way uh, the oct was it was not didn't it did not have a name uh, it did not have a it did not really know where it belonged to i think they were just testing out on people to see what they were opinion about and at that point of time i told shanaz that whenever it comes to uh, market we should be the first not that i was interested in being the first or second it's just that i was keen on using this technology because i just enjoyed it and uh, shanaz made sure that it has it came to us and i think we probably have the the 
longest experience of using this technology uh, in the country and maybe in the world. And uh, I have a fantastic young team of uh, Rohan. He's done a lot of work on uh, the Anterion. He did present his data in uh, All India uh, All India Optomic Society meeting, and uh, it was very well received. In fact, we had submitted a few papers to the ASCRS also, and uh, many other conferences. Unfortunately, it did not happen. And his area of work is IOL calculation. I think we are. We have some data now. We are writing it as a paper. Should come out with some publication shortly. Uh, we have Dr. Nikhil. Uh, again, uh, his interest is imaging, and uh, he's going to speak about uh, different ways in which uh, anterior can be used from for just not for the cataract surgeon for any other uh, specialties also. Uh, Dr. Namrata, she will speak on how anterior. Come gets you know how when you compare anterior with your uh, topography. Now topography becomes very important integral part of your uh, your cataract workup. Earlier topography was only in the refractive domain. Now cataract surgeons, I feel it's I consider it's a sin if you don't do a topography and get a cataract surgery done. You know it is so important. It's like many years back you're doing a LASIK surgery without a topography. I think if you're not doing it, please adopt it. Even if you don't want to buy an anterior now, but buy a topographer and please use it. At some point of time, you'll realize that one machine which can do everything would always score over the rest. I have uh, Dr. Pooja Kamar. Uh, she's uh, a consultant in cataract, uh, cornea cataract refractive surgery. She's done a PhD on uh, refractive, uh, different refractive platforms. Her areas of uh, interest in today's talk is uh, about how she's using it in ICL, uh, phakic lenses, basically. And uh, so all of us today are going to speak on multi-purpose use of uh, anterior, okay, with no financial interest. I'm, I'm saying it with a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm putting a lot of stress on this word, multi-purposes, Post-COVID, the new normal is how you can make one machine do multiple things. The luxury of having five machines to do one thing faces over to a large extent. So, because it has to be quick. For example, you use a topography, you have to make a patient get up, go to a new place. If you use a, a IOL master or a lens star, you have to make the patient again move on. So what happens is, in today's world, more the movement of the patient, the more the chance of all kinds of uh, stress of uh, the spread. So if you are bringing a machine which gives you everything in one go, I think that's a new normal. I think what I feel is now I've started making very clear that I want one machine which does everything for me so that that becomes a new normal. So I'm not going to waste more time, but I, I'm sure my message is very clear, whether it's anterior or any other thing, bring in technologies which can do multi-purpose, it saves money, and it's most important, it, it's, it, 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 it comes into the philosophy of post COVID life, where you're working on segregation and distancing. So I would, uh, this is my talk, I, I did not use any slides. I have not, and I would like to uh, invite Dr. Rohan to speak on uh, cataract, IOL, and how it's a multi-purpose uh, tool for him uh, as a cataract, young cataract surgeon using a young technology. Rohan, all yours. A very good evening to everybody. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Rohit Shetty for giving me this opportunity to speak on this platform uh, with such bright minds listening and such bright minds also giving talks here. So the topic for my presentation is the new hybrid OCT station for cataract, a way forward. So the Anterion, as uh, has mentioned, is a multimodal imaging platform optimized for the anterior segment. High quality images and comprehensive measurement is the norm. It minimizes the time needed to perform multiple anterior segment examinations. 
that means there's no need to move the patient and in post covid era as i said this is going to be uh, you know a great uh, a great thing in the armamentarium for the for machines like uh, anterior it has a short acquisition time and also has the eye tracking technology so what are the advantages that the anterior gives us it has high resolution oct image of the whole anterior segment including the anterior chamber angle which is important for cataract surgical planning the corneal maps curvature and elevation of the anterior and posterior surfaces of the cornea which is important for toric iol pre evaluation and toric iol calculation is also included in the software the corneal wavefront analysis which is important for multifocal iol pre evaluation and the possibility to change the segmentation manually the posterior corneal surface anterior and posterior lens surface and axial lens it also has the metrics and imaging app which will be covered subsequently so this is a table first of all uh, showing uh, the differentiation of the anterior as compared to the other machines available in the market and how uh, anterior has these four apps the cornea cataract the metrics and the imaging app whereas all the other machines would have either one or two of them but not combining all the technologies together so it's an all in one machine uh, which gives us the benefits in the imaging for the cornea the anterior chamber and visualization of the anterior and posterior lens surfaces uh, in the cornea app for the corneal topography the corneal tomography total corneal astigmatism the corneal power and the pachymetry in the metrics app for the anterior chamber analysis and the anterior chamber angle assessment and the cataract app for the corneal topography cornea analysis anterior chamber analysis and the lens thickness along with the iol calculation which is integrated in the system the principal uh, is swept source oct with a wavelength wavelength of 1300 nanometers it has a digital axial resolution of less than 10 micron and a scan depth of 14 millimeters so how the interface for the cataract surgeon works is that it combines basic measurements for planning Uh, that is the corneal analysis the anterior chamber depth lens thickness and axial length so the oct section images uh, to visualize the entire anterior chamber and the representation of the retinal profile even through the dense cataracts that's another great advantage that the anterior uh, gives you and uh, we've tested it over and over again through opacities and dense cataracts it easily goes through and gives us the accurate uh, axial length uh in fact uh, the range for the axial length it uh, goes up to 3 decimal points as we can see here it's giving us a uh, axial length of 22.86 mm with a plus minus of a 0.001 so that that's how accurate it is and once we click onto the axial length we can also get a, a pictorial representation of it so it provides all measurements for the spheric and uh, the toric iol calculations including the iol calculator uh the iol calculation is done with ray tracing that is the oculix software and the consideration of lens thickness and posterior surface of the cornea is taken into account i'll be discussing this in subsequent slides so this is how the interface page of the cornea app is once the scan has been taken so what are the points that are there here in the middle we have the oct image then we have the intensity profile below that is the axial length measurement and we have the display options right at the bottom of the screen on this the main thing here is on the same page it also gives you the cornea map once you click on that cornea map you will be able to straight away go to the topography of it you can also change the status of the eye by clicking uh, the axial uh, window over here once you click this it gives you all the options of the eye status you can change that from fakeic to fakeic iol a fakeic pseudo fakeic or piggyback iol in a single click now uh, the axial length as i said you do a double click and it gives you a pictorial representation of the axial length you can also enter the axial length manually uh, in cases of dense cataracts but uh, as we have seen in our experience very pleasantly we've not been used uh, using this uh, feature even once so as dense as the cataract is it has given us for each and every density of the cataract the axial length computed on the machine only we have not had to go and take the patient on to uh, a contact or an immersion biometer take the axial length over there and enter it manually but still the option is here although 
in our experience of over 250 eyes that we have done we have not been you uh, using this uh, feature even once uh, again you can edit segmentations so that is to say there is segmentation that is already given on the machine the machine already gives us a segmentation of what it feels is the surface of the cornea of the iris and the lens but we can always change that by clicking this and we can uh, use a drag and drop option and you can move the segmentation line to where you feel it is correct now uh, this is the iol calculator part of it and now uh, here we can see that uh, we can enter the target refraction whatever is the target refraction we want in the case we are doing a monovision for the second eye uh, then we can select a desired a formula uh, and an IOL. So we can see you have the holiday, the SRKT uh, he mentioned here. You have the Haggis, the Haggis L and recently incorporated the Barrett's Universal 2 formula is also there in the software. So uh, that gives you a variety of uh, formulas to choose from. Post which you can select the IOL power based on the IOL. It also has a list of various IOLs that are there, which you can choose if you have, if you, depending on your practice, whatever are the IOLs that you are using. Uh, going on to the toric part of it, uh, the toric you can enter incision, you can enter the induced astigmatism. The incision can be set manually as well. So this is where uh, uh, it's extremely. It I think uh, scores a little bit over the Barrett's. Uh, that we use normally the Barrett's uh, toric IOL formula, wherein uh, the incision, when we have to enter, enter it manually, we have to keep going back to the formula and keep entering it manually, say for five degrees or 10 degrees of change where we want to enter the incision. Here you can just toggle with it and play around and at the bottom you will get what the residual astigmatism is going to be real time. So it helps in selection of the toric IOL power by manually actually changing your incision site. So how that helps us in a cataract surgery is we can determine where is the sitting position that we are going to have. So uh, normally we are doing our cases temporarily, but depending upon where the astigmatism is, we can place the incision there. So along with the toric, with our incision also, we can correct the astigmatism. As I said, the Barrett Universal 2 formula has now been incorporated into the system. So uh, uh, long term, if uh, you know, long term, how it is going to be doing. Uh, we'll get a data of that uh, because now we are using Barrett uh, for all our uh, biometers and we choose our IOL powers depending upon the Barrett formula. So to summarize, uh, it uses the swept source OCT. It penetrates cataracts and opacities. Uh, multiple step acquisition in one capture, a cornea, curvature, AC depth and axial length. It links to the Oculix uh, database and IOL calculator. It includes the SRKT, Holiday 1, Haggis, Haggis L, Offer Q, and Barrett Universal 2 formula. But uh, this Barrett uh, Universal is uh, additional license is required. So it will not come with the machine. I think you have to pay a premium, which probably the, the, the company can look into, especially post COVID, and incorporate this Barrett uh, into the system itself. Thank you. Superb, uh, Rohan, as usual. Very clear, concise, and uh, and a very neat presentations. I would like to see, ask if there are any questions uh, on the grouping posted for him at this point of time, or you would like to take it later. Martin, before Shanaz is trying to figure out what what questions uh, are there for Rohan, uh, would you like to add your uh, your final thoughts on this? I know there's no final thoughts, but on <laughs> your, your, your insights onto this. No, I think uh, actually, to be honest, you're mute. Uh, you're mute. Ah, oh, I'm mute. Sachin has to unmute me. We Sachin can't hear you, me. Martin. Oh. We can't hear you. Okay, Sachin, can you put me on? Oh, we can hear him. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Nobody. Can, can you hear me now? Yes, Martin. We can hear you. Ah, okay. Thanks, Dr. Shetty. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Um, I think Dr. Rowan did a fantastic job to give an overview um, of the anterior, and I really don't have anything to add. I mean, uh, actually, um, uh, probably I was going to present uh, maybe in a different way, but uh, the same thing. So, uh, Dr. Rohan already said everything probably that needs to be said. Um, it's maybe efficient because you're not moving patients between machines. And probably this is one of the biggest advantage of all. Yeah, absolutely. 
I think uh, the biggest advantage now in COVID is you're not moving the patients out. Yeah. I think that's the biggest USP. I think that's something bigger than anything you can think of from yeah. the optical point of view. And this wasn't envisaged before COVID, so this was just by luck. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, do you want to add anything? Uh, no, I think it's um, completely, as everyone was saying, you know, the time efficiency is the big advantage with the Anterion, um, as well as not having to use the manual biometers as much, go back to acoustic or immersion biometry. Uh, all of that adds up to a better patient experience and a better throughput um, through the clinic. If you take into account it's about five to 10 minutes to move a patient between machines, there's half an hour per patient that you've saved. And, the, and billions of aerosols you prevent. Yes. Uh, Nikhil, you want to add anything? What, do you, what is your take on from a cataract surgeon point of view? I know you're speaking later. So um, from our experience, we've seen that the anterior uh, penetrates even the most dense cataracts. Uh, I would be demonstrating a few cases further where even a mature cataract, which was not picked up by the other high-end biometers too, was uh, we could get the axial and med measurements Fantastic. on the anterior. Fantastic. So... Shana's no questions. Should we move so on to the There are next some speaker? questions uh, in the question and answer uh, list, which uh, I think Dr. Rohan, you can uh, answer online. Yes. So uh, the first maybe you could is, uh, type out uh, the, the, the answers. Uh, yeah, the barracks is also possible on the Vidion planning station. This, yes, that's correct. But I was talking about if you don't have the Vidion planning station. Then in case you have to do it manually on a computer, then you have to keep going back, entering it, clicking calculate, it takes you to the next page, and then you get to know what the exact uh, uh, state, the residual power is going to be. But whereas here, you can get it live. So it saves you time on that. Up to what density of nuclear sclerosis in our experience? Uh, well, mature cataracts, easily it is penetrating. It will be demonstrated by Dr. Nikhil in a case. All mature cataracts, it has penetrated. We, as I said, we have not entered a manual axial length, even in one case that uh, we have done uh, so far on the anterior. Uh, what is the cost? I think uh, that uh, Shana has man can. How's the K reading compared? To How's the K reading compared to the true K on the so IOL? This is yes. basically uh, this is the basic data of the guys and that on the guys and that on this. On this. And soon we will be able to publish that. that. Uh, it, it is uh, very similar to the true K that is there. Uh, along with that, even the lens star. Uh, so we are doing uh, an analysis based on the lens star, the IOL master, and the anterior. The data will be out. Uh, as far as uh, these uh, stats results show, that the compared reading is very similar. Uh, does it do average angle alpha and kappa? Yes, that is going to be covered uh, in the subsequent slides. It does give you angle alpha and kappa and the approximate price again uh, that uh, ma'am can take. So we have finished all the questions. I think we want to move on to the next speaker, uh, Dr. Pooja Kamar. Uh, she is going to speak on her experience in using uh, this tool uh, for an ICL. Again, ICL requires your patient multiple tests, a topography for white to white and uh, other parameters, angle, the angle to ACD, the white to white, and the, the lens, uh, you know, uh, biometry. So again, it's a one tool which fixes everything. So Dr. Pooja Kamar, over to you. A very good evening to all. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, Tosh Bro uh, and uh, Shehnaz ma'am for having me here. Uh, Rohan has very nicely covered on how to use uh, anterior in uh, cataract uh, planning. Uh, Namrat, I was supposed to cover the one on corneal topography maps, but I'm just going to skip the queue because of few reasons. Uh, we do a lot of ICLs in our practice. And as uh, Dr. Rohit Shetty sir mentioned that it needs your topography for curvatures. It needs your anterior chamber depth. So probably you go back to the OCTs and do it. It needs your sulcus to sulcus whenever there's like, it needs white to white. It needs sulcus to sulcus just to uh, have like no 
and differentiate between the discrepancy whenever there's a doubt. So whenever you do this, you have to go to multiple machines. But when Enterion came in, what we realized was that Enterion was giving us all the answers in one or the other way, uh, whatever I required for my ICL plannings. At the outset, I have no financial disclosures of whatever I'm going to speak in this topic, be it the ICLs or the Enterion itself. And also I'll be covering it like just a brief, I'm not a glaucoma surgeon, but I'll just give you a brief insight on how this tool can be used uh, in your glaucoma practice as well. So this are just like, this is very nicely high definition uh, OCT itself also. So it gives you all the, it, you can see all the anatomical structures very nicely on the anterior. Uh, these are the four uh, imaging, uh, the apps which uh, you get in uh, anterior, which Dr. Rohan has already covered. So what is the role in ICL planning? Like, you know, there is a pre-op, like it helps me both in my pre-op planning and my post-op planning as well. How does it help in my pre-op planning? I need to take two apps into consideration for this. One is the cornea app and the other is the uh, metrics app because cornea app will give me the topography, the tomography, how much the astigmatism is on the cornea, the true total cornea power, the pachymetry and the metrics app is going to give me the information on the anterior chamber depth. If I need to uh, go back to the STS measurements or anything also, I can go and get it from the metrics app. So these two ma uh, apps are important for me when it comes to ICL planning. So let's see uh, the corneal app. Uh, corneal app, how does it help? This is how the map uh, gives us. Uh, you get your curvatures, the steep and the flat uh, keratometries, the CCTs. Uh, you also get the pupil diameter and the white to white. White to white is important because your ICL sizing is in a way, uh, like is dependent on your white to whites. So it gives you all the information here on the corneal uh, map. Uh, then when you have like all this, the con uh, anterior chamber, you can go to the metrics app where you can get the anterior chamber imaging. There you can, if you have any doubt, you can also see how your cornea is on as an OCT picture, the ACDs, the lens thickness, the white to white, and also if you need to measure anything manually. So like at this point of time, the uh, spur to spur distance is not available, but if you need to measure it, you can do it manually, which I'll cover in the next slide. Uh, so this is just an ICL. Uh, so there are two types of ICL available. As I said, no financial interests available, but we have a lot of experience with the star uh, surgical, the vision ICL and the one, uh, the IPCL by the care group. So when you have all these parameters, you just go to the uh, online calculator given by them and you enter all these parameters here. So you need to enter the keratometry values, the flag and the steep K with the Ds, the anterior chamber depth, the corneal thickness, the white to white, which you got from the corneal app. Uh, your refraction also, you have it from your optometrist or when you have done it alone, uh, uh, by yourself. So when you enter all these parameters, you get an ICL power and the size of the ICL as well as to which uh, size and which power is recommended for your patient. So just from one corneal and the metrics app, you have all the parameters here and you enter it and you straight away get your ICL power. And uh, if you have to measure your spur to spur distance in case you have any uh, doubts, you can do it manually from the metrics app. You just go to the metrics app and, and do it. Uh, this is the other uh, uh, fake uh, implantable lens available from the care group. This is all there also online calculator. Again, no financial interests here. Uh, Star Surgical uh, ICL doesn't ask you for spur to spur distance, but uh, when you have like the, the other Indian ICLs uh, do ask you for the so, uh, STS and all that. So because when you give in more parameter, they have the regression based calculator to give you an accurate uh, size and the power of the ICL. So again, you enter all the parameters, your keratometries, the ACDs, the spur to spur distance here, the uh, your SIA and the incision location, your refractions here, and then it gives you a I, I, your power of your implantable collam, uh, collamular lens. How does it help me in my post-op uh, evaluation? It helps me in my post-op evaluation because that, what, what you basically see in your post-op is how your ICL is placed, whether it is in place or not, whether your vault is higher or not, uh, or it's normal or it's very low. Uh, because whenever there's a high vault, it can lead to angle closures and other high pre I, uh, ocular pressures and other complaints. And if it is the case, then you might have to uh, redo your ICL surgery or expand your lens. So here, if you you can also see how your angles are. If you like, you know, if if your vaults are higher, as it, it can go into angle closure. And if it is going into angle closure and it is not being controlled, uh, then also it gives you a picture, and you can take a decision on what to do. Uh, also, and you, so one thing here is like you have to manually measure your vault at this point of time, which is pretty much easy because of the resolution of the uh, 
machine it gives you a very accurate uh, measurement of what your uh, vault of the icl is uh, again in low vault also you need to be very watchful about uh, what your low vault is because if it's very low below 200 you might want to probably expand it because or you might want to give your patient a warning because if there are chances that it can lead to a cataract cataract uh, formation also a lot of times you see that there is a difference like you know your plate haptics your haptics are uh, turned inside or your icl is not in place it will also give you an idea because there'll be a uh, difference between the two uh, like you know it will not be even in all the meridians so you can also go in each meridian and measure your vault of what it is in each meridian so these are the two things now let me come to uh, i'll just cover it briefly uh, applications in glaucoma you again go to the Mat metrics app and there you just choose uh, you know the uh, the uh, the segmentation when you choose the segmentation the machine gives you all these lines what green yellow and the pink line which you see so here what is important as a glaucoma surgeon one thing is the scleral spur so it gives you a line at here i've obviously measured it so it is giving you accurate but a lot of times it is not going to be accurate so you can manually uh, change it and take it from one spur to the other spur and it will give you a value for your example here it is 11.53 and you will get a value uh, the next thing which it gives you is the uh, the ang angle closure and the information about the angles at different variation for example what is the angle uh, at 500 uh, microns from this thing and what is at the 700 microns and it also gives you in different meridians so at this point of time i would not say that you know it can replace gonioscopy but it can give you an idea about how your angles are in each meridian and it also gives you information to trabecular mesh meshwork about how much the value is thank you i that's a, i think it's a wonderful uh, demonstration of uh, what this can do for an ICL surgery. Uh, being a refractive surgeon, one of the major challenges I always find is not the surgery itself in ICL, it's about the calculation. If we can get everything which can help in get, getting a perfect bang on uh, solution, I think that's what we require. Uh, and any questions uh, for her, uh, Sheet, uh, Shanaz? Uh, Unmute yourself. Yes. Uh, Martin so or uh, Adam, one, uh, you have anything to add? What uh, Dr. Pooja yes. has mentioned? No, I, I think uh, you, you all cover everything uh, very well. So nothing for us to say. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there are a few questions. Uh, there are three questions on the same topic. Is individual corneal layer topography possible? Is individual corneal layer PACI available? I don't know whether somebody can answer this. Yeah. Uh, so at this point of time, we cannot individually measure the PACI of each of the layers of the cornea, uh, not with the anterior at, at this point of time. Martin, Martin would you like to answer this? Um, well, we are uh, working on epithelial mapping, which is certainly one aspect of that, um, which uh, I don't know whether that helps or not, but this is uh, still a little bit way off because, uh, again, because of COVID, our clinical testing sites have been held up, so uh, it's been delayed a little bit, but we're, we're working on that um, and hopefully not too far away. Thank you. Um, Rohan, you want to add anything to this? So a there few a questions question here. Uh, there's a question, how does it compare with the UBM STS? So, it does not give you an STS, uh, as we know, is invasive. And for an STS, uh, that's the only technology that's there and it's invasive. So this does not give you an STS. And the white to white uh, to our caliper reading, yes. I mean, if you manually do it, it is very much comparable to what we do manually. And... Uh, yeah, that, that uh, the wavefront analysis of the cornea that Dr. Namrita is going to be covering, 
Besides the ACD, does it give the AD? Yes, it gives you the AD also. It gives you both the ACD as well as the AD. Even the, I think the glaucoma part is going to be covered by uh, the review of the cases. So we can probably take the questions on aqueous pockets in malignant glaucoma after uh, his presentation is done. Thank you. I think uh, we move on to uh, oh, Mr. Martin. Uh, Mr. Martin, uh, a good friend and a very, very passionate uh, engineer. Always love listening to you and, uh, you know, always, uh, you know, he's always a phone call away. One of the most friendliest uh, technical support for me in the world. <laughs> Martin, all to you. Over to you. You're too kind. Uh Professor Shetty, you're too kind. Um, actually, I think uh, already... Uh, we can't hear you, Martin. Ah, okay. Sachin? Martin, Sachin? Martin, we can hear you. We can hear you now. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, okay. Thank you very much for your kind words, Professor Shetty. Um, I do my best. Uh, but I think Dr. Rohan... Um, and also Dr. Puja, I've already done a very good job um, explaining what we're doing. Um, so let me share with you my presentation. Here we go. Um, this would be more uh, an overview and a summary uh, what already has been said. So let me be very quick, run through this for you. As Dr. Rohan has already mentioned, we are a multimodal platform uh, optimized for anterior segment. Uh, it's four in one. We have cornea, we have cataract, we have metrics, and we have uh, imaging. It's a single workflow efficient solution. So you have swept source OCT technology and ray tracing technology together. You have corneal topography and tomography. You have axial length, IOL calculation, and also anterior segment measurements. Looks like this. The cornea app, you have all the information that you need for cornea, including total cornea power and total cornea wavefront. You can have uh, multiple views. You can customize according to how you like to look at the information. You can look at differential maps and you can look at follow-up maps. You can look at the external image of the eye uh, and at the tracking and uh, centration of the cornea and you can look at the B-scan. With the cataract app, I don't think I need to describe anymore. It's already done very well by Dr. Rohan uh, and also the IOL calculation, especially for premium IOL and the opportunity to manually change your uh, incision position. Metrics has just been very nicely described by Dr. Puja. Uh, we have all the measurements of the anterior segment and we have 360 degree maps for looking at close angle glaucoma. Uh, imaging is uh, probably an area where we excel. We like to think we excel. Even you can do peripheral imaging of the sclera. So you can do the whole anterior segment, look at all the structures within the anterior segment very clearly. Um, just to give you some examples of some images, here we have a, a DMEC and a DSEC, a full thickness graft, Boulet, uh, keratoconus, dense cataract already been mentioned, post LASIK patient, Pseudophagic, uh, posterior chamber phagic IOL, intracorneal ring segments, and a bit more complicated case here of penetrating keratoplasty. So you have the latest swept source OCT with ray tracing technology, and we hope that brings you an improved surgical performance. And if that is true, it means that you're going to have better patient outcomes. You're going to have happier doctors, happier patients. Efficiency is straight ahead. 
Uh, it's an improved Pentagram and IOR master all in one. You could also say that it's a Cassia two and a Visanti all in one. And three in one means you have an improved workflow and efficiency. Some of our patients are old or wheelchair bound. It means that you don't have to move them between devices. That means you're going to save time. And if you're saving time, probably you're saving money as well at the same time. You can save space because you only need one device. And if you combine and have only one machine instead of several, maybe you create time to do even more surgeries. Uh, maybe that's possible. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, really? Yes, I'm sure. We have fast acquisition. And speed improves that patient experience, especially if you're a very busy clinic. It's a one click operation, then you start ticking. And this is how it runs. So we align the cornea inside the green box here and we start acquiring the image. And it's done. Now we're into processing all the data. That's how fast it runs. We do a little bit more processing. In fact, the processing time is faster than the acquisition time. Uh, processing takes even longer. You have your external image. You can see eye tracking position here, center of the cornea. You can see the B scan. You can see the cornea information, your axial length measurement with accuracy of standard deviation. You can see the profile of the A scan, and you also have an automatic quality indicator. Uh, and any image that has a high quality is automatically saved so that you don't lose it. So maybe today your data collection, if you have to move between devices, takes 15 to 20 minutes. We think you can reduce that down tomorrow to take maybe six to eight minutes. Maybe you can halve the time it takes you to collect your data. An improved clinic workflow and efficiency means that you save time, you reduce your cost. If you're in private practice, maybe you can make some money. More data makes premium IOLs possible. And of course you have all the cornea maps, posterior curvature, total cornea, wavefront analysis, anterior cornea, posterior, total cornea power, and total cornea wavefront. You have more data. And so we're faster for getting all the data and you reduce your tear time. That means you reduce your costs. That's the efficiency that you have with Anterion. It's modular, it's an upgradable platform. You can decide which parts you want. The imaging is central to that. For cataract, um, you see the entire lens. You see the anterior and posterior capsule. You have accurate lens thickness measurements. And you have swept source OCT for very accurate axial length measurements. We track the eye using these eight uh, targets on the cornea. And we're tracking the eye to ensure that the patient is always measured along visual axis. So we're always on the cornea vertex. So we should have very good measurement accuracy. You have precise axial length measurements, very low standard deviation here, which has already been pointed out by Dr. Rohan. And even through dense cataracts, because it's swept source OCT, you can get through much better with dense cataracts, even to grade three. You can see the IOL uh, location details of your corneal incision, checking distances between IOL and lens, measuring all distances. And maybe if you can see this eye much better, uh, you maybe change the way you think about your surgery. So uh, in this case, with this uh, focal cataract, maybe you wanna take a little bit longer than usual to deal with that. Uh, and in this case, on slit lamp, it looked as though it was the anterior uh, cortical cataract that we didn't see on the slit lamp. 
um, and it wasn't dense. So maybe again, understanding that uh, we can better plan our surgery. You can get improved results just by looking on these images, perhaps. You can see the limbal and scleral regions as well. For cornea, you have keratoconus possibility to look on with ICR. You can see uh, simultaneously correlate the map to the external picture and also the B scan. You can look at a symmetry in, in keratoconus. Here's a DSEC patient. Here's a DMEC patient. You can assess angles very nicely. And you can correlate both together the map and the anterior segment image. Axial and tangential curvature maps. You decide how you want to look. Elevation maps. Everything is there that maybe you're used to already with uh, previous devices. So nothing different here. Pachymetry maps. Total cornea power. And wavefront analysis. You customize the report how you want to see it. So you can have a single view, you can have a multi view, you can look at both eyes together, or you can do follow up. Finally, for glaucoma, already been mentioned by uh, Dr. Puja, you can look at how the anterior angles are. You can quantify all of the measurements of the anterior segment, including the spiral spur, you see very nicely with uh, swept source OCT. You can see peripheral iridotomy, probably you see better on a slit lamp, but you can see it. You can view stents very nicely. We see the scleral spur, we can identify the angle recess. And so we do a radial scan in our glaucoma evaluation and we look at 360 degree uh, maps. And as mentioned by Dr. Puja, you can see lens vault very nicely. Uh, and you have a much better feel for what's going on. Finally, imagine you could have an anterior and a spectralis together. You have a whole eye evaluation. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you very much for the invitation. I'd like to pass over now to uh, my colleague, Adam Hamilton, if I may. Uh, he is going to run through a little bit more detail uh, what's on, uh, on the system. Um, if that fits with the time scale, Shanaz, maybe you can confirm. Uh, yes. Yes, Martin, uh, let's invite uh, Adam, please. There we go, everyone should be able to see my screen now. So what we're going to do is just do a quick walkthrough of how the software works and how we can look at all this data that we can collect. So we'll start by clicking the thumbnail. Yeah, and for those of you who are familiar with our original Spectralis software platform, you know that for every different modality, you've got to close the screen and open the next one. Uh, it's one of the big time saving features for the clinicians with the anterior is that you can jump between looking at the cornea module, the cataract module, metrics and imaging live without having to go back and forward and select the next scan. We can set the system up to go straight into a surgeon preference mode and here's uh, I know there's some questions floating around about our keratoconus evaluations. We've just added in the PA curvature ratio map uh, in our last software update. All our basic information is here for anterior, posterior, total corneal curvature. We have segment information. We have wavefront information all of which can be adjusted to a scale that the surgeon chooses. And the nice part for the surgeon is 
whatever is displayed on the screen when you go into reports is what you can create a report for. So when you're taking information into theatre, it looks exactly the same as what you're used to on the screen, the same layout, so that there's no confusion around metrics or parameters. Looking over at the cataract scans now. Again, as was pointed out, even with, uh, without the topography module, and you just, if you've just got the cataract module it's starting out, you get a lovely pachymetry, a uh, topography map, so that you can see exactly what is happening with the cornea in a lot more detail than you can with other systems. So you can see if it's a bent bow tie astigmatism, if the patient's got a suspect cone, without even having to go in and do a topography. You can see detail of the lens, nucleus versus uh, cortex, so that you can plan the surgeries. You kind of know what you're in for before you get in there. All of these values, you've got the option of manually adjusting and the same with the peaks. Now, that's one actual um, benefit that the anterior has is you can manually edit those peaks because if we've got patients with a bit of a membrane over the macula, uh, especially on the IOL master, you can sometimes just get a little bit, uh, the peak can be in the, uh, you can select the wrong peak. Uh, and with the IOL master, you can't actually edit that. So for those retinal surgeons that are listening, this is a very handy device. Again, you've got your choice of options here, basic information or premium IOL information. And so the premium IOL information includes um, aqueous depth. And so that's from the posterior cornea to the lens and the combination of central corneal thickness and aqueous depth to give what most other machines refer to as the chamber depth. If we go to Calculations. And it's just taking it a moment on my laptop. So if we go into our calculations, again, each surgeon can have their own login, their own IOL database assigned and their own custom template for lens selections. We can pick our list, our lens. When we go into our Toric calculator, You'll note um, one thing that wasn't pointed out is you do have the option of selecting between predicted and measured, and you can switch between the two and again, see the change in real time with the Barrett formulas. For all your regular formulas, you've got the option of selecting between uh, total cornea and anterior cornea uh, curvatures. So you've got full control over what data you're using for the calculations. Again, what you see on the screen is what you get on the reports. So you get all the alignment information, everything like that. If we go in and have a look through metrics. Again, we can turn on all our overlays, select what we'd like. 
And if we have a look at an imaging case, or as I like to call it, free play mode, because if you can see it on the front of the eye, you can image it. You can actually see this patient's had a glaucoma shunt put in. So you can actually see how that's sitting in there. The software is very easy to use, very user-friendly. You've got options in the software, in the newer versions of the software that the Anterion ships with for creating your own custom lists for presentations. So instead of having to sort through uh, a big list of patients, you can just drag and drop them into a group or for research purposes. And it will automatically just select those patients that are involved in that particular study. And we now have with the new Anterion software, the ability to batch export. Different parameters. So if you were looking to do a review of cataract uh, axial length measurements against your existing machine, you can export all the data for all the patients very, very quickly and easily. So hopefully that's given everyone a nice brief overview of uh, how simple the software is to, uh, to move around and navigate and show that uh, there's a lot of customization features available for surgeons so that every surgeon in the practice can have their own variation that suits them. And I'll uh, throw back to uh, Shinez now. Thank you very much, Adam, for a, a good uh, presentation. Um, may I request uh, Dr. Namrata Bhuta to give us a talk on, um, she's going to talk to us about her frank evaluation of the anterior for topography. So Dr. Namrata, please come in. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for your introduction. My screen visible? Yes, it is. Okay. So I'm going to be talking about how good is the topography on anterior on today. So up until a few years ago, when a cataract patient came to us, just doing the biometry was enough to achieve the target vision of 6-6. But this is no longer the case now. The patient not only demands a good quantity of vision, but he also wants a good quality of vision. So just doing the biometry won't be enough. So we have to include the topographer and the aberrometer in our routine cataract uh, workup. So this is where Anterion comes into play. It acts as a one-stop shop solution for us, giving us everything in one machine that is your topography, your abrometry, your biometry, as well as your ASOCT. Now, as we've already uh, discussed, it has got four main apps. I'm gonna be talking about mainly the Cornea app today. So to give you an overview, the Cornea app gives you these different views. There's a single view, there's a follow-up view, there's the ODOS comparison and a multi view. I'll be talking about each of these as we go ahead. Beginning with the single view. Now, this is where you get a single map uh, either it can be a map of your axial curvature or your tangential curvature for both the anterior and the posterior surface. You also have the elevation map for your best fit sphere, elevation maps with your best fit sphere. And your uh, another very important feature is it also gives you an elevation map with a best fit toric ellipsoid. You also have the uh, routine pachymetry maps and the total corneal power map. Now I'll be talking a little bit more about total corneal power as I go ahead. So coming first to the basics that it gives. So, yeah. so it gives you here the anterior. So this is the basic map for the corneal topography. Now it gives you here the simulated K. 
so for both the anterior as well as the posterior uh, surface of the cornea now the anterior sim basically the sim k is the uh, average of the keratometry values and the steep and the flat meridians which are 90 degree apart and is measured only in the central 3 mm zone it also gives you the total corneal power now what exactly is the total corneal power the total corneal power is a ray tracing calculated power from which give, takes into account both the anterior and the posterior curvature of the cornea this is not the case with your sim k which only takes into consideration your anterior corneal surface now this total corneal power especially you cannot use it in all formulas but you can use it in your holiday to formula apart from that it also gives you your corneal pachymetry and your pupil diameter it also gives you the x and y coordinates to calculate your angle kappa now coming to the next part which is the segment part now it divides the entire now this map divides the entire cornea into different either rings or zones now look now why is this important this is mainly important if you see this is how it divides into zones of 2 mm 4 mm 6 mm and 8 mm now the zones are mainly important especially in cases of irregular corneas where you want to know how how much how regular is your cornea looking at so it gives you the astigmatism in various zones and looking at the astigmatism you will be able to identify whether this is a fairly regular cornea where you can actually go ahead and plan your toric iols or not so coming next to the wavefront map so in the wavefront map there are two maps that it gives it is the anterior corneal wavefront map and the total corneal wavefront map now uh, the total corneal wavefront map also gives you the total of the uh, lower order aberrations as well as the higher order aberrations looking at which you can go ahead and plan uh, your multifocal iol patients we'll be talking about that ahead another thing that it gives you especially very important in patients of ectasia Uh, is gives you the baseline and the follow up map comparison along with the follow up and the baseline difference map that you find in other topographers like the pentacam also coming next to the multi multi view now the multi view gives you multiple maps at the same time uh, you can have the anterior axial posterior axial maps there are customized templates also available for keratoconus for posterior for uh, keratoconus for post refractive surgery patients and uh, according to the customized templates the surgeon will be able to see the maps that he desires to see in the multi view so how can anterior actually help a cataract surgeon so it helps in multifocal iol planning now when the uh, when a surgeon is planning for the multifocal iol what he really needs to see is the pupil diameter which is given by your basics map uh, if the pupil diameter is less than 4.5 mm the patient can be you can go ahead and think of planning a multifocal iol another thing you need to see is whether the uh, topography is uh, it's a normal topography with astigmatism being less than 0.75 diopters you also need to see the most important thing is see the aberrations especially the total corneal wavefront parameters uh, which will give you the high order aberrations these high order aberrations have to be less than 0.5 only then you should go ahead and pla uh, plan a multifocal iol in these patients if it is more these patients are more prone to have higher amount of uh, glare and halos after the surgery coming next to aspheric iol planning now the uh, your wavefront map also gives you the spherical aberration now the spherical aber depending upon the amount of sp total spherical aberration in the cornea you can plan the type of iol that you want to implant if you are having an aberration in the range of say more than 0.16 to 0.33 you can go ahead and implant a negative sa iol either an alcon I, uh, iq or if it is more than 0.33 you go and implant an amo technis which actually has a negative sa of uh, minus 0.45 okay so coming next to the toric iol planning now in the toric iol planning again you can take in the values from the anterior axial curvature that is your sim k values and put it in the toric iol calculator and then calculate the uh, toric iol power you can also use the inbuilt toric iol calculator which is there in the anterior itself which already rohan has talked about another thing is about toric iol planning in irregular corneas especially in ectasia has in post refractive surgery you can use the segment zone map see the various zones in the astigmatism in these zones as well as the k values which will tell you 
what usually we take the four uh, mm zone into consideration as most mesopic pupil diameters are about 4 to 4.5 mm and this is what has proved in various uh, studies to give you an accurate uh, toric IOL power in these irregular corneas. So coming to the end of my talk, I think the anterior has a very, very robust cornea app, which helps the cataract surgeons in various ways as I've already talked about. Hello, Shehnaz, are you yeah. there? Yes, I am. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Namrata. Uh, uh, Dr. Nikhil, would you like to come in, please? <coughs> Nikhil will be sure. presenting some cases that he has done and share with us uh, his experience. Is my screen visible? Yes, it is. And uh, am I audible clearly? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so at the onset, I would like to thank uh, Pro, Dr. Uh, Rohit Chetty, sir, and Shena's ma'am for giving me this opportunity to talk in this platform today. So I'm basically going to be um, sharing with you all a few cases that we've come across in our practice where we've used the anterior for various different purposes. So first case today, I'm going to be discussing the mature cataract. Many people have already been asking that, what does the anterior do? Can it penetrate through a mature cataract or not? So here we see a completely dense mature cataract and we see the other biometers here. If you see, uh, we had to do a manual entry because both the uh, IOL master and the lens star could not penetrate the mature cataract and could not give us the axial length. Here we see an image of the anterior and here we can see the same mature cataract and what do we see here is that the axial length was measured on the uh, anterior successfully. Using this we could do the IOL power calculation and find out the IOL power for this lens. Uh, here we also see uh, in this case that in the, uh, in the calculation of a mature cataract sometimes when you have a very dense cataract the high resolution OCT is so good that we can clearly differentiate between the different layers of the lens. Like here we could see the cortex and the nucleus, which is well separated from each other. Coming next to the case of a posterior polar cataract. So here we see uh, a sequence of images of a posterior polar, of a dense posterior polar cataract. And we see here in the next case example. So what it does is it, it takes different sections of the eye. And what we see here in the third image is that there is an opening in the posterior pole. Okay. And we had to be very careful during surgery, but even though we were careful during surgery, just during a hydro dissection, there's a posterior polar cataract in the screen seen. During a hydro dissection itself, the posterior the Coming next to a toric IOL planning, I think some part of it has already been covered by Dr. Namrata. Uh, so basically what we usually do in our regular practice is we, we use the uh, EKR map from the pentacam to differentiate whether a cornea is regularly irregular or irregularly irregular. Now we have three, four millimeter zones and therefore we can classify whether the cornea is regular or not. So uh, here in the anterior in the cornea app, we can also find out using the different rings, the zero to two millimeter, two to four, four to six millimeter rings, whether the core are uh, toric, power, toric calculations too. And what we can do is we can either use the anterior corneal, that's the SIMK values, 
or we can even use the uh, total corneal power though we have to keep in mind that if you're using the total corneal power we should not be using it in the regular online calculators for the toric ios but we should be using it only in the holidays formula uh, if wanted we can also do a toric calculation on the oculix software of the anterior itself i think dr rohan has already covered this part where uh, we can directly select the iols from we can have it has its own planning station where we can do the calculation now coming next to a multifocal iol so as already discussed in multifocal iol we need to make sure that the cornea is regular it has a good corneal topography second point we need to take into consideration is the wavefront as we see here uh, the patient has minimal um uh, patient has minimal um Uh, low order and high order abrasions and also the next thing that we take into consideration is the pupil diameter obviously if the pupil is too large then in those cases the patients do suffer from a negative dysphotopsia also another book is the angle alpha and angle kappa and i think people have asked questions on the same too so uh, basically angle angle alpha is something that we cannot calculate using the anterior but angle kappa we as you see here we have the x and the y coordinates so using the x and the y coordinates the angle kappa can be calculated and hence we all know if the angles are usually large if you have a large angle kappa then we should not go ahead with the multifocal iol implantation uh, now coming to uh, the next segment is the post refractive surgery planning now usually patients who have undergone prior lasik we use the online ascrs calculator for the myopic or the hyperopic lasics and what do we need here basically is we need the uh, isis or the effective uh, rp values which we get here from the pentacam ekr map and we also again need the ring values of the 0 1 2 3 4 mm zones so as i already discussed earlier also here we have the different zones as you can see the 2 4 6 8 mm zones we can enter these values in the online ascrs calculator and this can be therefore having a anterior can be good enough while even we are planning up post post op a post refractive surgery patients now undergoing cataract uh another another good feature on the anterior is that if you do not want to calculate the or using the online calculator it itself uses it has the hagis l formula which is for specifically for the post refractive surgery patients as you see here this is the post refractive patient that we have and we use the hagis cell formula and we compare these with the ascrs online calculator and we were pretty close by it was just 0.5 uh, 0.5 diopters off or uh, coming next to an interesting case which we noticed there are a few interesting cases that i'm going to be showing you all so here we see a case of an iol glistening as we see this is a pseudo phakic patient and both the anterior and the posterior part of the iol here were uh, shows listening so basically as again asked in some of the questions we uh, this the machine does not have a lenticular it does not show you the lenticular abrasions it does show you the corneal but lenticular abrasions is not uh, a feature of this uh, next coming to keratoconus so the corneal ectasia as seen here uh, we have uh, the wavefront parameters out here so as seen there is a large amount of coma uh, large amount of trefoil which is expected in these patients and what we also see here is that the vertex we can see the uh, thinnest point and the vertex and we can see how far apart they are we can see areas of steepening so as we see here even in this we could do a, a calculation a post uh, in a irregular cornea and we can do an iol power calculation for the same uh, now coming to icl it's all we uh, dealt with well with dr pooja and as she was telling you here what we can do in icl planning is we can not only do a measurement of the central vault but also of the vault in the periphery also so sometimes we do see that if maybe an icl haptic is not tucked in properly or something we may see a difference in the vault in the peripheries also which is an important thing because we need to reintervene reintervene in these cases so uh, another important feature here if you see is the that the there are various different formulas for doing an icl planning nowadays uh, obviously the IC, the icl that is from the star surgical group and all ask for the white to white 
but then there are other calculators which ask for your sulcus to sulcus there are some calculators now for the angle to angle so the anterior gives you not only the the aca distance the angle to angle it gives you the spur to spur distance and it also gives you the white to white so once you mark out the sclerals spurs which can be easily done because of the high resolution oct we can then come to know these values now another important feature is something called a lens vault the lens vault in uh, is the is the distance between a line drawn from the two ends of the roots of the iris uh, up to the anterior uh, anterior anterior capsule of the lens so the yellow line you people see here is what the lens vault is actually so here if we see in this case it is a negative lens vault it is minus 0.85 in such cases these patients are more prone to an angle closure because you see the lens is completely approximated with the iris um now coming to icl vaulting so we, as discussed already low icl vaults are known to cause cataract this is one patient who came to us uh, we've done serial octs for her and we've seen the values remain round about 250 itself the lowest value we got over the three month period was 230 so we did not luckily till now we've been doing her regu we've regularly been doing her checkup she has not developed any cataract and we do intend to follow her up in the future too of uh, further coming to large vaults this is one of the patients who was referred to us from outside uh, the patient if you see here has a vault of almost 1100 microns uh, again we decided to follow up the patient for we did serial scans and we saw the vault was constantly increasing the final vault we had was almost it almost went up to 1200 microns you can see the angles here how narrow they become in this case so we decided to uh, explant the icl and do a reimplantation in this case uh, here again these are different images that we have seen in our this thing here we see uh, the high resolution oct in a patient who had undergone a dsec at our place if you see how clearly see the graft host junction here you can see how well opposed it is there is no there is no fluid cavities or anything in between so the high resolution oct is so good you can come to know the exact depth at which the graft host junction is also attached um coming next of the image this is an intax a patient who had a single intax ring implanted for keratoconus you can see the exact intax ring you can use the measurement features and you can actually calculate the depth at which the intax ring is actually placed coming to the a case of a conjunctival nevus as the question was asked earlier also this not only images the cornea but you could if it go up to the conjunctiva and the sclera lying below here you could clearly see a conjunctival nevus and you could see it's how well well it's been imaged here by the anterior uh, this is another case here of the dmac which is this is just a, uh, a quick post op i think this is a third day post op or saying first day post op case here we could also see how well it's picked up a soft contact lens which has been placed over the eye and uh, this is a patient who was using a rigid contact lens for uh, a keratoconic patient who was using rigid contact lens again we can see how well it's fitted over the cornea uh, again another picture here of the iris cyst which we picked up which we've also shown out here so finally as dr uh, rohit shetty said in this area in this era of covid where uh, time is so precious we don't want patients roaming around the whole hospital going to different rooms we need we need a one stop solution so the anterior gives us just that it gives in us uh, it gives us a built in biometry it has the uh, anterior segment oct it has uh, the topographers and it also it also has the wavefront aberrometry so in this in this era of covid where we need to save time and we need to prevent patients from moving from room to room i think the anterior is the perfect one stop solution which is going to give us all the perfect uh, which is giving going to give us all the things that we need for an for an anterior segment uh, surgeon in today's time thank you dr nikhil thank you very much for this uh, presentation uh, are there any questions uh, for uh, which you would like to answer there are some questions i see for the panelists so before we wind up um i believe there are questions that we can uh, write back to you doctors 
because they are very specific and uh, they are very elaborate questions. But to answer just a couple of them, from the company side, I believe there are some questions and queries on the pricing of the equipment. I would like to tell you that this is a system that is modular. You can build in the imaging app, of course, is a standard thing in the system, but you can add on the apps depending on what your needs are. And obviously the pricing also varies accordingly. So uh, I would be connecting with you individually uh, to answer those queries of yours. And um, if you need to, please connect with me. My email address is stamane, S-T-A-M-H-A-N-E, at the rate toshbromedicals.com. Uh, you must have got the invite from me. So please connect with me if there is anything specific you'd like to ask the panelists. They are also available to you. Uh, please connect with me and I will forward your queries to them. And um, with this, I would like to wind up the, the meeting. Thank you very much, Dr. Shetty, Dr. Rohan, Dr. Nikhil, Dr. Amrita, Dr. Pooja. Thank you very much for being with us. Adam Martin, I thank you again. Especially Adam, because it's nearly midnight for him in Australia. He's in Australia, so it's like midnight for him. So thank you, Adam. And uh, thank you, doctors, for spending so much time with us. Uh, stay safe and good night. With this, I close the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.